Hooty who all my stock market gamblers. Welcome today. It's Thursday. Stock market having a relief rally. We're up over 200 points on the Dow, over 150 on the NASDAQ. Now, we might still get a little bit more. We were oversold, and now we're moving up. Now, are we going to hit new highs? I don't think so. I think we still got some more downside to go. The Russell 2000 index was down about 20%, almost in bear market territory. The NASDAQ is down about 10% and the S&P only about 7%. I think we got to get the S&P to about 15% on the downside before we get a big move up. Okay, so anyways, we got some more downside going. Now, we got the relief rally today, and we may get another day of that. But I do think there's still going to be more downside pressure. Matter of fact, the rally is already giving way today. We were up a lot more, and we're coming back in. Okay, so what I want to talk today about is what's causing this. Well, it's called inflation, right? And inflation's not going anywhere. We got the price of oil up eight at around $87. Now, oil just this month has moved up 15%. 15% just in 20 days. Okay, so now is this going to affect inflation? Well, yes, it is. Another wave of inflation is going to be coming, right? And this inflation is not transitory. It's here to stay. It's going to stay throughout the remainder of 2022. Now, there's this is funny. There's this big hedge fund trader, Bill Ackman. Now, he's, he wants shock and awe. He wants the Fed to come out there and raise 50 basis points. Now, to me, that's not shock and awe. But anyways, he has a large short position on in the market would be my guess. And he wants the market to come down. He wants the Fed to do his work for him again. Well, in any ways, the Fed's going to come out and they're going to raise probably, you know, in March or whenever. They're going to raise a quarter point or so. But it's not going to do anything. Look it. Here's the thing. You got real rates and you got fake rates. Now, the fake rate of it of interest right now is running about one and a half percent one point eight percent actually on the ten year the ten year bond one point eight percent it's been going up and mortgage rates are going up also they're up, up about now almost three point seven percent compared to four percent rates are going up right okay well anyways these rates they are continuing to go up and this is not going to stop inflation though now here's why here's why okay so inflation the government will tell you it's seven percent right so let's say you got 2% on the bonds that you get and you got 7% inflation, that's 5% negative, a negative rate. You have negative rates right now. The real rate of inflation is negative 5%, but actually it's much worse than that because inflation's running between 10 and 15%. So you take 15% and you got 2% on the bonds, you got a real rate of inflation at about negative 13%. Now you're not going to stop inflation until you get rates positive and the real rate is nowhere close to positive the real rate is negative very negative and this is going to keep inflation running rampant now you got to protect yourself you just have to protect yourself because your paycheck's not going to go as far i mean you, you, you got everything in the, your bank accounts are getting taxed at an inflation rate your spending is not going to go as far you have to protect yourself now why do i say protect yourself well i say to do it with gold I say to do it with silver. Now, we're going to talk about the miners in a little bit. That's where the real play is. But people tell me that, Mike, gold is a relic. It's dead. It, it, it just died. It died. It died, Mike. Well, no, I don't think it did. I don't think it has died. Now, okay, gold, when 1971, gold was $35, right? Ten years later, went from $35 to $800. Now, that's 23 times return. Okay. Now, that was 1971 to 1981. Now, okay, then gold went into a bear market from 800, came all the way down to 300, which it was around the year 2000. Now, 2000 to 2011, it went from $300 to $1,900. Now, that was a six times return, right? Right. Now, people say, well, Mike, yeah, look it. In 2011, gold was 1900 and now it's 1800 It's done nothing for 
over a decade. Over a decade, it's done nothing. Okay, now well let, 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 let's think about this. Now, in that decade, it went from 1900, had the bear market, it had the bear market, came all the way down, all the way down to 1100, up 1900 down to 1100. But now we're starting to move upward, 1100 being the low. Now, I'm not saying we're going to go 23 times off 1100. We could, we could get to 20,000. But I am saying we're going to go at least five or six times off that 1100 and get to five or six thousand dollars now when were we at 1100 we were at 1100 in 2015 okay by 2025 we will be at five thousand dollar gold now there's going to be swings in between there up and down and you can all tell me it's just a dead relic and now the government here why 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 is gold being suppressed why is it being suppressed well the government doesn't want you to know that the fiat currency fiat currency is failing. The U.S. dollar is failing. So they suppress the prices of gold and silver. Now, how do they do this? They do this with paper gold and paper silver. Now, for every ounce of real gold, there's over 100 ounces of paper gold. Every ounce of real silver, there's over 300 ounces of paper silver. This suppresses the price of gold and silver and keeps it low. Now, they can't suppress it forever. The other thing that I believe is suppressing it is Bitcoin. Bitcoin prices are an alternative to gold and silver. It's a way to get out of the system. And nothing wrong with Bitcoin. I just don't know if it's going to continue upward or not. I do believe that gold will hit $5,000 by 2025. Okay. But the price of Bitcoin is used to keep gold suppressed also a lot. The money's flowing into Bitcoin. The government loves this because then people don't realize that the fiat currency, the fiat currency, the dollar is actually failing, right? The dollar is failing and it's, it's going to continue to fail. It's going to collapse actually. Now there's ratios in the gold. To gold. Let, for example, gold is trading right about, well, let's call it 1800 and the Dow, let's call it 36,000. So it, it's a 20 to 1 ratio. Now, that's been one-to-one -one two times in history of 1930 and 1980. It was one-to-one, -one, and I believe it's going to be one-to-one -one again. So either the dollar is going to come down to 2,000, work to meet gold, or gold is going to go up towards the 36,000. And believe me, it's going to be somewhere in the middle. Maybe it's at 10,000, maybe it's at 15,000 where they meet. But I do believe they're going to come one-to-one -one again. Now, why do I like silver? Well, I like both. I like gold and I like silver because they protect you from inflation. But silver is probably the better play. Now, here's why. The ratio between gold to an ounce of silver takes, this is just approximate numbers, approximately 70 ounces of silver to buy one ounce of gold. Now, that's high. That's a high ratio. Now, we've been over 100 just recently, and we've come and down. But a normal ratio is more in the range of 30 to 1. We're at 70 to 1. So I like silver better. I like silver better better than gold right now. I think it will outperform in this next bull run. We're in the middle of a bull run right now. Now people will tell you it's a dead relic, but no, we're actually in the middle of a bull run. We started the bull run at 1100. We're up to 1800, 1850 there about today, and we're going to be heading, I call in $5,000 an ounce for gold by the year 2025. We're moving up. We're moving up. Okay. But I like silver better and I like the miners better than the physical. The miners are really beat down. That's more leverage than miners. You can get more bang for your buck, so to speak. The GDX and the GDXJ are the way I play this. I think they're beaten down. And I think they're going to come up. But the real value, I see real value in the silver miners. Uh, I'm just going to give you a couple of silver miners I like. These are not recommendations to buy. These are the ones that I buy. These are the ones that I like. Okay, and they're cheap. They're cheap. All right, look at HL. Hecla mines. Okay. Now, just yesterday, it went from like $5 to $5.80. Had a big, big up move. I wouldn't be a buyer right now today. But you get that pulling back below $5.50 and heading towards $5, I would be a buyer of HL. That's just what I'm doing as a stock market gambler. I'm going to be a buyer of HL. That's running about five, right around the $5 price range. Now, if you really want to get in the low price silver miners, Okay, I'm going to give you one here that's trading at 80 cents that I like. It's called BlackRock Silver. B-K-R-R-F. 
black rock silver this is just what i'm doing this do your own research you know this is a nevada mining company they mine silver and it's bkrrf trading around 80 cents okay that's just what i like that's what i'm buying to protect myself from this runaway inflation that we have that doesn't seem to be going away anytime soon now they say it's going to go away sometime soon but i don't believe it not with the price of oil price of oil is just skyrocketing getting higher look at it oil may have a pullback and it probably will it's trading around 87 maybe it pulls back to 60 or something but i think in 2022 oil could easily break that 100 dollars and may even get close to 150 dollars for a barrel of oil do you know what that's going to do to your gas price start looking for that eight to ten dollar range eight to ten dollar gasoline this is terrible what's going on it really is it's sad but you got to protect your yourself and some of these can make you rich i believe the silver miners are a possibility that's how i'm planning to get rich that's just me that's just me i'm gambling on them i believe they're beaten down i believe they're a good opportunity now this stock market here this stock market here got oversold okay and we're starting to rally back up we're having that rally back a relief rally if you will the relief rally started today now we may get another day or two of more relief but maybe maybe we head lower i do believe we're going to head lower like i say we're down about seven percent on the s p 500 i think that has to get down to 15 percent, and that's going to pull the nasdaq down some more it's going to pull the russell down and the dow down but i believe we're about halfway with this correction and this is normal people get real upset with this oh my god the market's going down this is normal stuff you need a correction we haven't had one in a very long time about 18 months for the s p so anyways i'm expecting it to get down to about 15% off. 15% off is nothing. And then maybe we bounce and hit new highs. Very, very possible that we're not done with the new highs yet. I don't think we're ready for the crash yet. I think they're going to send in, you know, the stimulus again. I think they're going to spend the trillions of dollars. Once they see this market dropping, they're going to pile in the money. I believe that. Look, and if you like this stuff, give me the thumbs up. If you really like it, punch that subscribe button so we can talk more again. I'm Tall Mike. Get out there and have a great day, everybody. We'll talk real soon. Bye-bye now.